I'm here by the Spirit of the Living God to tell you, change your garment. You are no longer the black sheep of the family. As a matter of fact, God is going to do something in your spirit, man, that will cause you to be elevated out of the situation and circumstances that you're in. Because instilled in you by a nurturing spirit or individual, with the elements of praise, of worship, and delight, and focus upon God himself. David understood in the most dangerous fields of life that worship was going to be the key for his deliverance. The reason why David could subdue a bear and a lion and kill them and gain mastery over them was because of the spirit of worship that existed in him. To be an overcomer from a black sheep and to get over the dysfunction that has passed down to you through your generation, you must worship God in spirit and in truth to break the curse of the devil. You can only break the curse by being a worshiper. A true worshiper learns that dysfunction cannot have a grasp or a grip over them. They worship through their dysfunctional issues. They worship through their pain. They worship through their angst. They worship through their anxiety. They worship in such an intense way that few people understand why they're so intense in worship. So it makes it all the more rational. And you realize this, that there isn't a son worthy to be anointed king. He asks the question, are there any more of your sons? And he said, Jesse answers yes. But he's in the sheep field, communicating once again that the issue of dysfunction in the family has not been fully resolved. And, and the prophet Samuel says to him, sin for him. We will not sit down until he comes. We will not be in rest. We will not sit down on the on God's business. Whenever there is something that has not yet presented itself before you, God has to make sure that you ask key questions. What? Where? Why? How, when will it come? The prophet Samuel asks the question. In the midst of a dysfunctional situation, you must attune your mind, your intellect, and everything within you to ask the right questions of the situation, of God, of those to whom you're speaking to, in the moment. Ask the right question. You can often get to the root of dysfunction and into the will and the mind of God by the right question. Abraham asked God a question which God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he asked them multiple questions. And he knew how to entreat the Lord to ask those questions. The thing is, you must be versed, literally, 
by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, I believe he will prompt you to ask the questions in the time that you need to ask the right question and the right answer will be seated into your spirit to ask. When he asked the right question, things moved from dysfunction to functional. God never operates in dysfunction. When the right question is answered, the dysfunction ceases. When David comes before Samuel, the Lord says, this is his anointed. Arise and anoint him king over Israel. The Bible lets us know from that time forward, the spirit of the Lord came upon David and an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. When we ask the right questions and we choose not to let this function reign and prevail, the anointed one comes forward. Many of you that are black sheep of your family are truly the anointed woman. And the devil has kept you so much in a funk through the years that he is not wanting you to see or to be revealed to you that you are the anointed one. God's test has proven it, that when he says there isn't an anointed one here, there isn't one that I've chosen, sin for the one that is left out. You may have counted him out. You may have counted her out. But I've never given up on the value of the individual that I've created and formed in the belly of the mama's womb. The Bible says this, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. Before you had that gifting or anointing with oil, you were already anointed. And the dysfunction of your family can never stop the anointing of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So let's talk about some of these things that even stems into our own family. Because dysfunction, I mentioned early off, dysfunction hurts. Children are hurt by dysfunction. Fathers and mothers are hurt by dysfunction. Even if dysfunction comes from them, it's coming from a hurt individual. I want to say that again. Dysfunction comes from hurt individuals who don't know who they are. When we don't know who we are, when we don't even see the value of others, we cannot value ourselves. We will never value other. And the pain of that lack of understanding brings pain and agony in the heart, the mind, and the psyche. I knew someone years ago in my own family who constantly contemplated suicide because of the pain that was constantly in their heart. I know some, some friends of mine that contemplated suicide because of the dysfunction within their families and in their own spirit, man, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost and wanted to give up. Dysfunction hurts. Dys dysfunction leads to a pain within the inner soul that cannot be pacified by drugs, alcohol, sex, elusive pleasures, money, cars, homes, whomever, or whatever. It will never be pacified by it until the heart finds contentment and satisfaction. Listen, dysfunction leads to unnatural soul ties, 
being tied to people to the point that it becomes perverse in nature, not necessarily sexual, but you need this person in order to function day by day. You can't even tie your shoes unless you get approval from this person. You can't even make basic life decisions because you are so tied into this individual. You have inappropriate behaviors. People have inappropriate behaviors because of their dysfunction. Let's talk about it. anger, pain, bitterness, malice, hatred, variance, seditions, wrath, variance. All of these things are in the hearts of a dysfunctional family, a dysfunctional person. They cannot make prudent decisions. Mishandling of their resources, their monies, their employment situations, family relationships, always angry, launching out with someone, gross neglect of children. I remember years ago, I went to a restaurant with friends of mine. We're sitting in the restaurant and at the table to our immediate right was a group of young people, a baby that was crying at the top of their lawns in a, in a crowded restaurant. On a Sunday evening, most people are out wanting to enjoy a quiet Sunday evening with fellowship with their family and friends and just have a good time. And in the midst of this, this baby was crying profusely and this dad was just sitting there so engaged in conversation, constantly using profanity. And when he finally realized that this baby was crying, he turned around and hurled insults at the child, cursing the child. Tell them to shut that noise up before they take care of them in a very vulgar way. When the only thing that child was looking for was the attention of their father. They may have been hungry, needing to be changed, may have been sick, but he was so concerned about his own self-interest that he couldn't see the dysfunctional nature of his communication and his lack of parenting skills or softness, or love towards this child. And my heart became immediately grieved, as were those of the, of the ones that were with me as well. But in a few minutes' time, everything began to turn for the worse. And he ended up getting up, snatching the child, and later leaving. The dysfunction of a family is painful. Think about that baby through the course of their lives, what that child is experiencing if that dad did not receive help. Inappropriate behavior leading into ne neglect of the child and abusive nature of that child in a rather harsh way. Most people that come from dysfunctional families, you find that they are abused children. I want to submit to you that our mental institutions and our prisons are full of people who have come from dysfunctional experiences. I also want to further submit to you that there are quite a number of dysfunctional families and people walking free today that are pretending to be happy and like they have it all together. But they're hurting on the inside because of this dysfunctional nature. I want to further submit to you that there are quite a number of dysfunctional people even in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ Today, even in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today, we see people that are experiencing dysfunction. People that are arguing frequently and for no apparent reason. People that push others away, even in the church, even at home, even in the world, unable to celebrate someone's success of another and covering up and pretending to be something when they know that they're dysfunctional in nature. We could dress it up. We could speak well. We could, we could live in the best places. We could drive the best cars, use pre prestigious titles, have employments that are really of the cream of the crop, and we are functioning, looking in a way 
and real, not realizing that we're hiding and masquerading our dysfunction. Functional relationships, healthy relationships, healthy viewpoints, and having a heart of repentance and reconciliation with one's family and friends to actually heal the wounds and the hurts and the pain and bring it all together into the love of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, it is the love of God that heals all dysfunction. It's the love of God that brings us into the realities of functioning properly. Let me share some of the pain points of a dysfunctional family. I shared some of them. Some of them can cause fear. Some of them could cause anger, a lack of effective communication, not feeling safe within a home environment, lack of a healthy environment to, to flourish and to grow. Even when it gets down, we raise irresponsible children because of dysfunctional families. Rebellious children are seeds of a dysfunctional family. Reclusiveness and reclusive children and reclusive adults. Rivalings come from dysfunctions and dysfunctional families and dysfunctional mindsets. Even the attitude of I'm better than everybody else because of what I achieve is a dysfunctional mindset. The competitive child comes from a dysfunctional mindset. Even when we do so, when we look at things, why do you think that even your child has this mindset? Because they've come from dysfunction. The argumentative child, the overly talkative child, the woe is me child, the depressed, depression, often is a major key that someone has come from a dysfunctional surrounding, a home, or has experienced some dysfunction or they have something going on in them psychologically that is now leading them down a path of dysfunction. They may have come from a very sound home that was highly functional and skillful in addressing the dysfunction, but something has gone awry on the inside of them. Even a highly functional family can become dysfunctional, and a dysfunctional family can become highly functional if they're willing to put in the homework and do what's right. Listen, the angry child, the mama's child, and the, or the daddy's child that think that the other parent can do no wrong, although that parent may be an abusive parent, a parent that may have molested them or raped them, they feel as though in their mind that the parent can do no wrong because they're dysfunctional in their thinking. And failure to take care of one's own family. Someone rebuked me on Facebook a few weeks ago because I put a post out there about men that don't take care of their children. I understand and I do know and I'm very well aware that there are some women out there that don't take care of their children as well. Even when it comes down to child support. But the thing that was in my spirit was on men. But although we focus on men. We must understand that all parents, mother and father, have a right to raise their children and they should raise their children properly and fairly and within the mindset that God intends. When we neglect our children to feed them, clothe them, provide for them, keep a roof over our head, even if our circumstances are deplorable, meaning that we have lost employment, things of that nature, but are we striving to do that which is right for our children? Do we love them? Do we nurture them? Do we secure them? Do we speak to them in a loving way? Do we allow them to speak to us and tell, them, tell us what's on their mind? Do we enter into active dialogue with our children so long in the African-American experience years ago, I remember that the statement was a child should be seen and not heard. And what have we done? We created a generation of those that came after us who said 
They would not discipline their children the way that they were disciplined because they were not allowed to vent. And we did not talk to them to tell them why mommy or daddy was doing what they were doing. We weren't doing it because we were angry. angry. Some of them did. But we were doing it because we wanted them to grow. We wanted them to live. We wanted them to survive. We wanted them to become the children that God intended for them to be. We must understand that dysfunction comes from a lack of love, a lack of wisdom, a lack of understanding, and a lack of being in fellowship with God. Regardless of titles, when we lay down our titles and we learn to seek the face of God and say that we're going to be overcomers and our children will experience the power of overcoming because of the love of God. Listen, there are many more things that we could talk about today, but I want to leave you with these basic keys to overcoming dysfunction, effective communications, sitting down with one another. I alluded to it earlier, but sitting down and talking to one another in a peaceful environment, not talking at one another, where there's anger that is still yet being circulated. Anger is just being recycled. But sitting down fully understanding and putting yourself in the shoes and in the mindset of the other. To gain understanding, to gain respect, to gain commonality, and to rebuild the walls as Nehemiah did. So that all the breaches, all the gaps are now closed. And the city is encircled for protection and for peace. Reestablishing love in the family. Reestablishing love and commitment and trust and dedication. Revisiting the vision for your family. Where would you like to see your family in future state? Where would you like to see your wife succeed in future state? How would you like to see your children blessed that their lives and their career are solidified to the point that they're now making wise decisions because they have followed the example of mother and father? They have secured their own family in safety and peace and in love. And you can see the residuals, the fruits, hallelujah, Jesus, of the Lord now taking roots in their families. You could see the husband, your son, your daughter rising up and saying that their spouse is blessed, their mom is blessed, their dad is blessed. And the relationships are cohesive in nature. You could see their children thriving, growing, their educational pursuits are sustained. Their grade point GPA averages are flying through the roofs because they come from a healthy, functional family. And here's the main key to it all. Everyone is a worshiper of God Almighty. They understand the functionality that comes from the spirit of the living God. And they understand the blessedness that comes from a relationship that God honors. They understand that their sons and daughters will reap the benefits for generations to come. They understand that the generational curses have been permanently and sustainably been cursed and removed. And the blessings of the Lord flows through their bloodline. This mindset 
in this spirit of oneness and healthy functionality. They understand is the vein through which God flows into their lives to be an example to so many other people in the kingdom. God wants your life. Hear me, man and woman of God, to be an example of blessedness for all eternity. You are blessed when you rise up. You are blessed when you sit down. You are blessed when you come and when you go. You are blessed when you're in the field, when you're in your marketplace, when you're sitting in your business, when you're driving your car, when you interact with those that are in the church. They hear and see the blessings of a highly functional family unit. They see an example of godliness in you and in your family, man and woman of God, that they now are gravitating towards. There is a magnetic generation being generated from you. And they are drawn to the light of your functionality. And they see the example set before them. And this example is so pure, so loving, so viable, that they can not run away from the fire of God that is in you. You are like a candle set upon a candlestick whose fire cannot be hid. You are like a tree whose branches are flourishing that the birds of the air come to find lodging and peace. Listen, when you are highly functional, those who are experiencing torment, pain, and disruption in their lives come to you to find peace. Great peace have they who know their God, and you can't be highly functional and not know God. They're coming to extract and make a withdrawal of your peace, of your functionality, of your example, and of your love, and of the love of God. Create an atmosphere that is conducive to challenge all dysfunction, whether it's the family, whether it's the whether it's the spirit of the of the spirit of the Antichrist. Create an atmosphere that makes functionality the standard of the day. God bless you, and I pray that you take this word of the Lord and seal it with a praise. God is going to bless you to do some marvelous things in the kingdom with the functionality that he is going to provide. Prepare your heart before the love of God, and God will bless you. This is Pastor Whitfield saying, I love you with the love of the Lord, and I only wish for the best for you and yours. Now go and pursue the Lord. God bless you.